Hey, how's it going guys? Got a gear review for you on something a little bit mundane. And as you can see here, this is the ubiquitous Nalgene water bottle. Everybody has one, or at least knows somebody who has one, and I mean, I'm sure that this seems like a very boring item to have around. However, I thought I'd just shoot this little review because this is a piece of gear that you'll use when you're traveling or hiking or camping or whatever. So I thought I'd just uh, shoot this and maybe uh, mention a couple of fun facts and hopefully you might find this entertaining. So first I'm going to actually read off uh, the history of the company just uh, so you know where Nalgene came from. So sit back and just have a listen. So let's see, story time. Back in 1949, a Rochester, New York chemist named Emanuel Goldberg developed the first plastic pipette holder. Along with three workers, he began the Nalgene company in a small building at 625 South Goodman Street. For years, Goldman and his growing team developed the Nalgene line of state-of-the-art polyethylene laboratory equipment, centrifuge bottles, filter units, storage tanks. Obviously, it wasn't the kind of stuff you'd toss in your backpack for a weekend in the woods. But there were rumors floating around, stories about scientists taking the smaller, more convenient bottles out of the lab and using them on hikes and excursions. By the 1970s, this unofficial use for Nalgene bottles caught the eye of Marsh Hyman, president of the Nalgene company in Rochester, New York. Enter the Boy Scout connection. Marsh had a son who was in the Boy Scouts. He and his fellow scouts used Nalgene lab bottles on the trail. They were perfect as water bottles for storing powdered drinks and pancake mix, and for carrying matches and shampoo and snacks and all sorts of camping supplies. When he learned about these great new uses for his lab bottles, Marsh Hyman went to the Nalgene specialty department with a mission. Spread the word to outdoors people all over. Tell them about this new line of high quality camping equipment. So that's the how it started. Uh, that's a little history. Uh, as you can see, my stuff gets abused and it's used pretty well. Um, as for the actual bottle itself, they're marketed as being incredibly impact resistant. I mean, I think you'll find videos on YouTube of people actually trying to destroy a Nalgene bottle and having a hard time of it. But um, yeah, very tough, uh, temperature resistant, and they also market themselves as being resistant to odors. So it's hard to get that plasticky smell when uh, you're putting liquids and drinks in here. Uh, currently, I believe... Uh, Nalgene water balls are made out of uh, a substance called Eastman Triton Co. Polyester, which is just a strong polymer, which is an upgrade from uh, the standard polyethylene that they were using before. Uh, also, they market their bottles as being BPA-free. For those of you who don't know, BPA stands for bisphenol A, which is an organic compound, which is a building block for several groups of plastics. Uh, BPA got the public attention just because it, there was some evidence that contributed to uh, the fact that it might be an endocrine disruptor because it mimics the body's own hormones, specifically estrogen. So uh, to be on the safe side, Nalgene manufactures all of their bottles to be BPA free. Uh, if, in case you were wondering, uh, BPA can be found on the linings of the insides of canned foods and a lot of uh, popular plastics that you find around, for example, PVC. Uh, if you want to avoid uh, getting BPA in any of your food, in addition to using Nalgene water bottles, they recommend that you avoid canned foods, um, avoid polycarbonate plastic containers, don't microwave your plastics, and uh, also avoid putting your plastics inside dishwashers or using harsh detergents. But you don't really have to worry about that with Nalgene bottles because, as I said before, BPA free. Also, if, in case you guys were wondering, if you look at the bottom of the bottle, I can't see if I can get it, you'll see like a little triangle with a 7 inside of it. Let's see if I can get a clearer picture right there, like that little triangle right here. And also right there. In case you were wondering, that little seven is called a resin identification code. Um, it was developed in 1988 to help with recycling programs to sort different types of plastics. Uh, there are seven different categories, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and seven is pretty much a catch-all category for anything that can't be classified in groups one through six. Uh, it has different types of plastics within Category 7, such as polycarbonate, uh, compostable plastics made out of organic compounds, and uh, stuff that has BPA. However, even though this is classified as Group 7 uh, plastic, this, this plastic that is used by Nalgene is uh, BPA-free, so it's safe for you. Uh, these are all dishwasher safe, although they recommend that when you wash this, you keep the cap away from the heating part of the dishwasher and all of them are made in the US in Rochester, New York. So they come in a variety of sizes and a variety of colors. I mean, I'm sure you've seen people with all sorts of different bottles. Uh, this one is 
particularly marketed by REI. Some companies sometimes they commission Nalgene to create the bottle with their logo on it, so that's pretty cool. And there is a variety of different caps. Um, I like the standard cap just because it's the simplest and it seems to be the most durable. It's easy to hook into things. Uh, I've found that if you're shopping around, you'll see a device called a Firefly, which basically you replace this cap with a cap that has a light inside of it and it shines into the bottle and it turns your water, Nalgene water bottle into a lamp. Uh, there have been reports, however, about the Firefly shorting because it's kind of fragile and also it shorts because it's not waterproof, which is ironic because it's on a water bottle. But if you're looking to use that with your Nalgene water bottle, just take your headlamp prop it against something, for example you could just stick it underneath and find a way to balance it. If you turn your headlamp on, stick it underneath, it'll do just the same thing. You basically turn your water bottle into a lamp. I've done it a couple of times on campsites and it works fine. Just find some way to balance it out, like stick some sandbags or a book underneath it and you'll be fine. So that's something to think about. If you're going to do that, pick a very opaque bottle with a color that you find pleasant. I like warmer colors, not blue. I'd rather go for something like a red or an orange. Uh, also, Nalgene markets this flask. Um, bought it at a gear sale just to try it out, see what it was like. I actually don't like it just because whereas these are marketed as being nigh well indestructible and I believe that, this is actually kind of fragile because it comes out as a sleeve. So you have one container and then you can use this as kind of a cup. When you take this uh, sleeve out, which also acts as a um, temperature aid that keeps things from getting too hot or too cold too fast, the actual bottle itself, as if you can see, I can flex it and this isn't nearly as durable as the circular bottles. And in addition, this initially it clicks into place, but this little clicker right here is starting to wear down, so this just slides off, and it's only held in by friction at this point. Um, they had some pretty good ideas. There's a single cap, however, when you cap this back in, you can pull, sorry, let's see if I can pull this off, pull this off, and then you have a shot glass. So, the design of this is actually pretty ingenious, but I think the execution needs some work. I don't need this separate sleeve. If they had just made this all one single unit of like uh, plastic that is this durable, uh, this would have been a much better design. I do like how thin it is though. This can easily fit into a day pack and not take up too much room and you'll have <clears throat> a little bit of uh, um, something to drink while you're traveling. But uh, at this point, I don't like this thin version if they reissue it with a thicker wall of plastic, I think this would be a better design. So that's my little spiel about the flask. As for the normal bottles though, incredibly useful. You got the 32 ounce and you got, what is this, the 14 ounce. I think this is probably the most useful, even though it has less capacity, just because it's easier to stick into the mesh pockets of the size of your backpack and it doesn't take up that much room, but you can still hold a usable amount of water. This is great if you're, you love to drink like a fish, but it's a little bit too big, even though uh, this is the most popular design. But uh, all in all, yeah, if you don't have an Algae water bottle, get one. Seriously, they're incredibly useful. They'll make your life easier. And if you're traveling, it's a necessity. Um, you just need to keep hydrated and this will save you so much money when you're traveling just because instead of having to buy a Coke or a drink or every, wherever you are if you're traveling around the world, just fill it up with water, carry it with you. Refill it in the bathroom sink at the museum you're at or whatever. So yeah, that's my little review of the REI or Nalgene bottle in general. So thanks for watching guys and uh, have a good day.